Hi everyone, I'm Caroline Pirke from the Technical University of Munich and from G Healthcare. And in the next few minutes, I'd like to talk about one of my recent projects, which is residual learning for 3D motion corrected quantitative MRI. And as the title already suggests, the actual motivation for this project is motion and motion artifacts in MRI in general and for parameter mapping in particular. So if you look into current clinical practice, we realize that both voluntary and involuntary patient motion are an omnipresent challenge. And this is because motion artifacts decrease the MR image qualities or even make images completely unusable so that scans have to be repeated rather frequently. And as there are many types of motion, and as the appearance of the artifact highly depends on the individual acquisition scheme, the body region to be imaged or the condition of the individual patient, so whether he or she has difficulties lying still, for example, motion correction has remained a complex problem without a universal solution. And therefore, many conceptual different strategies have been developed to address these challenges, starting from motion prevention through motion robust or motion adapted acquisition schemes to motion correction strategies that aim to estimate and or correct for the movements, either prospectively or retrospectively. And although motion is a problem in more or less all types of MRI exams, it is amplified in quantitative MRI. And this is because for quantitative parameter mapping, multiple acquisitions are required instead of a single contrast-weighted scan to encode the parameter information of interest. And in practice, that means that body motion distorts the entire signal evolution and consequently causes a misquantification of the underlying parameters. In this context, the recent research efforts towards faster acquisition schemes are, for example, an important step to reduce the susceptibility to motion already in the first place. And also non-Cartesian sampling schemes have shown to be more robust to motion than Cartesian readouts. The high acceleration factors that can now be achieved often rely on massive spatial undersampling or signal acquisitions in the transient instead of the steady state, or a combination of these approaches, as in case of MR fingerprinting or short MRF, or other fast transient state methods, such as quantitative transient state imaging, short QTI, which um, is the basic framework in this work. The short scan times definitely increase motion robustness, so that artifacts are generally reduced in these fast acquisitions. However, they are unfortunately not entirely immune to motion. And to address this problem, there has been previous works which demonstrated motion correction approaches for MRI type techniques. However, they all focused on almost exclusively on 2D acquisition schemes. To also tackle this problem for the general 3D case, Jan Kurzawski, together with our collaborators in PISA, proposed a navigator-based correction in all three dimensions. So to realize what motion artifacts actually mean in clinical practice, let's leave these theoretical and very conceptual views aside for a moment and Let's have a look on these quantitative maps of T1, T2, and proton density that we obtained with the 3D QTI framework. And this is an example where a volunteer was asked to move the head during the acquisition with a motion-free reference in the right column. So with the aim to correct for these obvious artifacts, 
the navigator base correction that was proposed by our collaborators exploits the key feature of QTI, namely the time-resolved acquisition, which you can see here. So to estimate and subsequently correct for the motion-induced misalignment in the acquired image time series, the spatial temporal raw data is divided into temporal so-called segments, from which we then reconstruct individual navigator images. And these navigators are then aligned to the first baseline navigator to estimate the misalignment and to correct the raw data accordingly. So as you can see here, image quality in the corrected parameter efficiently improved. However, by design of the self-navigators, they only resolve motion on a time scale of around seven seconds, which is the length of one navigator segment. So for this reason, artifacts due to motion timescales below what is captured by these navigators remain. And to resolve these remaining artifacts, let's call them residuals, is the topic of this work and of my talk today. To do so, we propose a residual learning approach for 3D motion corrected quantitative MRI. And this comprises the following three key features, which I'll discuss in more detail in a second. The residual learning strategy, a 3D multi-scale CNN architecture, and a physics-informed motion simulation. So instead of a direct mapping from the motion corrupted to the motion-free parameter domain, the residual learning allows us to transfer the inference task to a more sparse rep representation of the artifacts, which is the residual domain. And the predicted residual maps can then be used to eventually retrieve the targeted motion corrected perimeter maps. In terms of model architecture, we propose a 3D patch-based multi-scale CNN to account for spatial relationships of the artifacts in all three dimensions and on multiple scales. So the CNN is built by a local path that processes more localized spatially, spatially adjacent features and the dilated convolutional layers in the global path gather more global contextual information with the increased receptive field. Both the local and global features are then concatenated and fed into a final block of fully connected layers. And to overcome the usual bottleneck for supervised learning approaches, which is the requirement of paired training data sets, we propose a physics-informed simulation to generate motion-corrupted perimeter maps from motion-free raw data. So to imitate real head movements, we retrospectively apply continuous rigid motion patterns which are translations and rotations to the individual time frames of the raw KT space, and then propagated through our imaging pipeline. And before we actually feed the corrupted parameter maps into the CNN, we perform a navigator based correction to mitigate rather coarse artifacts already in the first place. And as you can see here, despite being trained on purely synthetic motion, the CNN is still able to recover high quality T1, T2 and proton density maps in case of real subject, subject motion, here shown for a healthy volunteer scan. Also, the same CNN that has only seen healthy volunteer data during training generalizes well also to pediatric and adult patient data with pathological findings and substantially improves the quality of quantitative maps, 
also in these clinical cases. So to conclude, we present a 3D multi-scale residual CNN for retrospective motion correction in fast three-dimensional whole brain multi-parametric MRI. The residual learning allows us to transfer the problem statement to a sparse domain. The 3D CNN architecture captures the full 3D nature of head movements and the thereby induced artifacts. And the physics informed motion simulation enables efficient model training without the need for paired data. As that, the proposed two-stage motion correction substantially improves image quality of quantitative maps in case of 1.5 and 3T field strength for healthy volunteers and importantly also in case of patient cases with pathological findings. And without extra scan time, as no additional navigator information is required. Based on these results, we are optimistic that fast acquisitions and higher immunity to motion, quantitative MRI might become a standard for clinical practices in the near future. And this would constitute an important step towards the overall goal of precision medicine. With that, I'd like to thank you for your interest and time in listening to my presentation. And also, I would like to thank all my co-authors, without whom this would not have been possible. <laughs>